see the tree is linked in and the bit of the nerve fibrin and resistance, they're all linked together. So this completes the image. Now one of the things that was kind of interesting about this view was that when we started to look at that picture of the condor more carefully, we blew it up. And I don't know if you can see, it's got a little bit of, you can see a little bit of the orange tag on the wing. On top. And when we blow this up further, you can actually see it better. And it turns out it's number 302. <laughs> female, actually Boise, Idaho, in 2003. So we actually tracked this bird. We can figure out what this, what this bird was. Kind of and what I like was that this, that matching this um, condor, of course, it's a, it was one that was re-released. It was released in the oceans and released into the running clubs. And by reintroducing that bird and, and trying to bring that bird back, um, it relates in a way to Moran as the painter and his creating the sense of the canyon. So this is kind of conceptual um, thing that goes with the pictures that I'm really interested in. This is another piece to do with condors, and this is um, mapping the flight of two condors at Yavapai Point. And you can see, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, we used a postcard as the basis for the space. And then we photographed these two condors flying around, and we mapped where they went. And then I don't know if you can see the lines or not, but I'm judging if those lines going to the pictures. Um, here's another example of how we would work. This is uh, Nance Adams' photograph from Point Sublime. But then we started to look at all the pictures that he made from Point Sublime. There's another one. And another one. And this is how they map together in space if you put them together in the terms of the space they represent. And there's a little gap, so he filled in the gap with a little picture here. <laughs> and then we started to build out our own pictures to fill in the rest of the space and bring it towards the viewer a little bit here. One on the other side and one in the front. So now you get this view of the space coming towards you and that picture at the bottom is really quite close to the camera. And then we, were, we hung around for a while, we spent a couple of days there, and there's this moon picture here of the moon rising. And it resembled in a lot of ways a very famous photograph that Ansel Adams made, which some of you may know. That, photo, that moon rise resembles that, which is one of his more famous photographs of Moon Rise or Fernandez. Um, here at the same time. So we were kind of looking for these kind of weird and interesting historical links and footnotes and stuff that go into work. Now I want to describe a little bit about how we do our work. Uh, because my practice has changed. I've been making pictures now for a lot longer than I, than I care to think about. But it's over 35 years. And um, when I started out, you know, we everything was filmed. And now, of course, everything is going to digital. Well, I'm the kind of photographer who likes to embrace change. I still work with film. I can still do, do 19th century. So not that I live through, but I can still do it. Um, but I like digital, too. And, and one of the things that digital has done is enlarge our practice. So here's an example of the way we've been working on the Grand Canyon. Um, there's a tremendous number of historical pictures out there that you can access on the internet. So um, Byron and I will bring our laptops with us when we do a trip. And we're, we're sitting in the lodge at the Elta Bar, surfing on their free Wi-Fi. <laughs> and we come across uh, a picture that we like at the National Archives website. It happens to be this photograph by Ansel Adams. And he made this picture of, uh, from Hopi Point. So, so why don't we go out to Hopi Point and see what it looks like. So we take the picture where this Hopi Point. Oh, we printed out, by the way, because I've got a portable printer right with me. So we're, we're serving things on the web. We go to Hopi Point. Here's the picture of Hopi Point. Or here's, here we are at Hopi Point. You'll see there on the left is my camera. It's a very small view camera, an Italian view camera, that holds a digital back. The digital back is a very high resolution digital back. And we've, used, we've been using a back that's 28 megapixels. So if you have your own digital camera, you probably know it's about a 10 minute megapixel camera or something. This one's 28. We just moved up this year to 56. We have a 56 megapixel camera. Very high resolution. Um, I'll take a picture with that, and it gets 
and gets encoded onto a card. And then I'll take the card and give it to Byron, who's sitting there on the steps with a laptop. And he'll download the image. And then behind him is a printer, and we can print it out and look at it. We can look at it on the laptop and see if we like it. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a panorama. We say, well, let's, let's complete the pictures that Ansel didn't take and make a panorama. So we make this. Here's a panorama we made. Here's the Ansel Adams view. And we kind of completed from left to right so you can see the full view that is about 180 degrees or so from um, Hopi Point. So we look at that and we go, well, it's OK. You know, it's, but the lighting's not very interesting. What, what would happen if we begin to change some of the pictures, if we go back and replace some of the panels with different times of day? So that's what we do. We spend two days there. And we start photographing at different times. And we replace the panels that we have in the panorama to create a different sense of time. Now, as we do this, Byron's putting it together in Photoshop on the computer. So it looks like this on the computer. He's putting in different things. We have different layers. And we're trying out different things. If we don't like it, we take a new picture. So after two days, we end up with something. And this is the final piece. This is what we ended up with. It's a panorama from a Hopi point that incorporates the Ansel Adams <coughs> at the end of the picture. Now, in the beginning here, the lighting changes. So the first photograph is at sunrise. The next one's at midday. The one after that is the, sun, is the sunset of the storm over the river. Then you see another midday shot. Then you see a storm again in the afternoon and up, and up above the north rim. And we got this lightning bolt, which was really great, uh, very, very fortuitous. And then uh, right in the middle of the view. And then you see the next day, the, the early morning with the sun coming up through the rays which is very similar to when Ansel made this picture. So that creates the full view. So um, we can only really do this because we're working digitally, because we can see what we're getting, we can put the pieces together, and we can understand how to change things and how they might fit. Because we're really kind of like doing a big picture puzzle here. It's like taking a jigsaw puzzle and putting it back together. Because we can do that in the computer, we can see how we're working. Here's a similar example. Um, this is a panorama that um, we call the rim to rim panorama. And we just, I just finished this about a couple weeks ago. But it's a, it's a view you can see in the middle of the river. The actual panorama looks like this. And on one side, on the south rim, you have a woman and a mule looking across with binoculars. And she's looking across. This other side on the north rim, and she's looking back. <laughs> now the full piece looks like that. And you know, you can you can't stand at one spot and make this view. So this is really a fictitious landscape. And one of the things that we're doing is playing with the idea of creating a landscape. Um, one of the constant things that I hear from people about the Grand Canyon is it's almost you can't understand it by looking at it because it's almost incomprehensible the depth of it. It's very difficult when you look at photographs because even if you think you know the space, in over three years, they've gotten pretty good at recognizing some of the features. But it's still really hard, depending on where it's from, what time of day it is, all these different things. So it's almost like you can create this the sense of space. And so we've been thinking about that idea a lot of created spaces. Now here's a couple examples. Um, this is uh, on the north rim. And it's a place called the transept. And that's the camera, my camera, and Byron, and saying again, we're trying to figure out this picture. It's not a photograph. It's a drawing. In fact, it was part of the Dutton reports in the Grand Canyon. And it's a lithograph. And it's a lithograph that uh, William Holmes did with Thomas Moran in, collabor in collaboration. And because it's a drawing, it doesn't have to owe allegiance to real space. Uh, they, did, they could have made it up. But when we got to the to the transect, we realize it's pretty close, but there's some things that aren't quite right about it. So we spent a day walking all around this place, trying to figure out where, if any place, this picture was made. Well, it turns out it was made in a lot of different places. There were parts of it that were made in one place, and parts in another. And what Moran and Holmes did was they took little notes, and they, they drew something, and then later on, they just put it together. So we determined it was made from 
about 11 different locations and 11 different drawings in five different places. So uh, what we decided to do was try to put it together. 